Hello, garden friends all over the world. And welcome to my polytunnel in the kitchen garden here in Sweden, in Sarah's kitchen garden, Filnadens Trigård. My name is Sarah and I have a project, a challenge for myself this week, and it is to do one live stream each day at YouTube. And uh, as you noticed yesterday, that was the, the start of this project. It was a bit tricky because of uh, our internet connection. It made me a bit angry, <laughs> yeah, to be honest. Uh, and I have thought a lot about that the other day, but um, I, I think I will just um, go for it today and hold my thumb, as we say in Sweden, that it will work today. Um, it felt a bit bad yesterday because I really wanted to show you a lot of things in the kitchen garden. So I did my start sitting just uh, outside our um, entrance, not showing you anything at all from the garden, but that's how things worked or didn't work yesterday. Anyhow, we are going and uh, this is live day number two from the garden. And um, I have had, uh, well, it's been a bad day really. <laughs> it's not yet over and I hope it will be better. Um, just after I did the live stream yesterday, I took a walk with the children and our dog, Kubeling. He's a Newfoundland dog. And uh, when we arrived home, he, he was a bit strange and didn't want to lay down uh, or sit down. And he made, you know, noises that can tell that he, he, he is hurt in a way. Um, I didn't take it uh, that seriously um, because he's a big breed. And sometimes he s sort of stretches his legs or hurts um, when he's making a jump or something. So, and that happens quite often. So, um, well, it didn't get any better. So I stayed up all night with him. And since we live in the countryside, it's, um, well, we are several hours um, away from a veterinary. Uh, vet. Uh, so I called the vet in like three o'clock in uh, night time. Uh, but then it was, I, I could, uh, I could wait uh, so that we could go to the closest city because it's very far to go to another city in Helsingborg uh, nighttime. Um, so uh, we waited and now my husband, he just arrived from the vet uh, and he brought the dog with him. I always get very worried when our dogs are ill. <laughs> Uh, it makes me worry because they can't tell what they want and what's wrong and I always feel sorry because I can't I can't make it good for them. I guess that's all of you who has have animals like cats and dogs and whatever you feel pretty much the same basically especially with dogs they are very very um, special animals. Right, so uh, I am tired today, uh, trying to catch up and uh, it's also um, a week where all our children are home together because they are free from school this week. It's um, a kind of um, vacation, a fall vacation. So it's a bit busy. Uh, it's not like, oh, I'm going to take a rest on the sofa. Uh, I will do other things instead. Now I have said to the children that they have to stay indoors for a few minutes while I will talk to you. Uh, basically I am working afternoons in Tuesdays and my husband works um, um, in the mornings but now we had to go to the vet so we had to change our plans. So this afternoon I will now go out with the children and play in the garden and do something in the garden. Um, to give me some energy <laughs> for the rest of the afternoon. I don't know how that is for you, uh, where you give, have your energy from in, in the garden, but I, I get a lot of energy from my children. And some people would say the opposite, that um, it's, um, <laughs> well, they, they take a lot of energy from you. And they do, of course, but for me, it's, it's also the opposite. I, I, I get a lot of energy from them. I love to see how they play in the garden, for example, and uh, how they play together. And I love to do take a walk with them. Hi, Suzanne. Nice to see you. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, so I'm really looking forward uh, an hour or so together with the children before I go back in the kitchen where it's basically where I am if I am not uh, outdoor. Here's our cat, a female cat. She had kittens um, that I made a, a short video about in spring. It, her name is Bomben. It, it means the bomb. <laughs> All our kittens, they, uh, they get uh, funny names um, and the children, they, they can choose whatever they want. And, and well, at the moment, it's like bombs and things like that. We are now in, um, in my polytunnel. It's a big polytunnel and I think I will stay here for a few minutes. Um, I guess the connection is better today. So I will, um, in a short while, I will move out in the kitchen garden to show you how it looks uh, right now. Uh, the weather is better and it's not as cold as yesterday either. But I had a question. Hmm, where did I put? Oh no. Yeah, here they are. Sorry, I thought I forgot them out <laughs> in the garden. Uh, I had a question from Cynthia watching, saying a lot of nice things in the comment sections. And if you want to, you can um, as well give me a comment and, and tell me what you would like to see uh, during the week. And I'm so happy if you give a comment, all of you watching right now, saying where you are watching from, what country and who you are. It's nice for me to know. Well, Cynthia writes to me, I haven't had, I have a paper, I haven't had much luck with my polytunnel yet. Do you think it's too late to plant spinach and lettuce in the polytunnel? And you are doing an amazing job with growing your own food for your family. Thank you. I think I am too. <laughs> uh, this is how it looks in the polytunnel at the moment. I will show you more in a, in a short while. Oh, great. So you ask me if it's possible to, we are almost in November. Is it okay to plant spinach and lettuce uh, in the polytunnel right now? Um, and I would say it depends on who you are asking. I am constantly sowing and planting whenever... Uh, <laughs> Hi Eva Madeleine! Um, I am constantly sowing and planting all through the year. And I don't mind uh, like the recommendations saying, oh, you should rest and it's not time for planting. It, I used to think that if I plant, if I sow things each day, I can harvest each day as well. So all of the things you see here now and like in December or January, February or whatever, is a result for, of, um, of me sowing and planting every day. And I think you could practice the same really. It depends on what you want to uh, grow, of course. And Cynthia, you ask for uh, spinach and lettuce. Oh, here I must show you. Now comes Kuling. Hey, good Ben. Come. Hey. Oh, you are stuck in a... Oh, you can see it's a bit hurt. Poor you. Hey, good Ben. Oh, come and say hey. He wants to be with me. You can stay there. Oh, I just want to hug him all the time. He's my, he's my little furry baby. <laughs> um, you suggested um, lettuce and spinach. And actually, spinach, I, I'd say all the time in a year, except summer, is spinach time. Winter, spring and fall spinach time. So I have here in my polytunnel, uh, I have you see the plot over here with uh, um, compost. In that part I made new sowings of spinach. It's only uh, last week I think. Uh, and I have also um, containers over here. I move slowly so that I will not lose my connection. Uh, three containers here pots in which I made sowings of spinach and I have another place over here that you cannot see from from this place in which I sowed spinach <laughs> right so spinach um, is one of very few vegetables that I make new sowings uh, um, now in uh, in November 
I apologize for my bad English, but I guess you understand what I mean. Um, right, so the point is not to make new sowings that will give you a harvest, like in a few weeks. Because what happens now is that in Sweden, anyhow, this could maybe be different in other countries. But in Sweden, we will have, as I said yesterday, we will have cold winters and we will have dark winters. So from a few weeks uh, on, there will be no light, no daylight so that the vegetables can actually grow. And you can see that already because some of the vegetables that I grow... Um, over here I will try to make a move. It's a bit messy in my polytunnel. I apologize for that. Over here I have the Chinese cabbage and this is a variety that will not form um, a heart. Um, it, it will stay open like a, like a lettuce. You see here? So you pick each leaf um, and it will continue growing but it will not form a heart and here are two plants that have already you say bolted yeah they will form a stem and they will go to bloom and why do they well simply because it's uh, it's not enough daylight they can't they can't grow uh, the way they want to do so what they do is they, they try to reproduce itself by, uh, by making seeds, babies, before it's getting too dark and too cold. Uh, all right, so some vegetables are not suitable to make new sowings so uh, of this time of the year, but spinach and like um, what we say in Sweden, Winter salad, winter salad, which is not the, the correct name. A lamb's lettuce or um, oh my god, I forget the name. Lamb's lettuce, anyhow. Um, it will not bloom or start start to um, creating seeds in this time of the year. They will stand the cold. So the point with making new sowings of spinach is that you will only want them to like germinate and they grow a few centimeters and then they will stand. They will only stand surviving the winter and the cold. And this you can do in parts of Sweden, um, out in the main kitchen garden in the open. And you can do it like in your polytunnel or an ordinary greenhouse from glass, for example. So when spring comes, the daylight uh, increases and what happens then is that all my small 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 plants they will start to grow and they have already um, established a root system uh, in in the soil so when the sun starts shining and it warms up here in polytunnel it could be like 20 degrees celsius in um, in february and they will be like rockets you know they will grow so fast and they will give me a harvest long before the spring sowings will be ready. So this is why I sow spinach uh, in like October, November. If they don't germinate, doesn't do much and they will germinate when spring comes. So spinach and um, lamb's lettuce and also an amazing plant I will show you. I think I mentioned it yesterday. Um, miner's lettuce. These plants are actually going to be moved so I can lift one up for you. Oh, that was a tiny one. Here are two. Come on. I didn't sow these plants. <laughs> these plants, they were sowed by themselves. <laughs> couldn't do this with only one hand. Here. Here's our toilet. I fertilize a lot with the urine. And you guys watching from Sweden, you already know this. And uh, next spring I will terrorize you all with uh, nice uh, blog articles about urine <laughs> and how nice it is. All of this uh, soil in the polytunnel uh, is being fertilized with um, 
with urine. Me and the children, we pee here in the polytunnel. All right, so this is the miner's lettuce. And as the name says, this is a fantastic leafy vegetable because it grows, keep growing, even if it's dark. So this one will grow slowly, of course, in winter. And when winter comes uh, with winter temperatures and it freezes, it will hang down to the ground. <laughs> it looks very, very sad. But in the middle, you then can see new growth. Oh, try to separate them. Here in the middle, you see the tiny leaves? And they will start to show even when it's dark and, and cold. So this is a vegetable that you could make new sowings of in, in fall. And you have the tiny plants that will start to grow in springtime very, very early, before your lettuce and uh, the, like cabbage and uh, um, other leafy greens will start to grow um, in spring. So they sort of overwinter um, just when they have germinated or as seeds in, in a pot, for example. But one thing I do uh, with specifically lettuce and spinach, and this is nice for you to know, Cynthia, is that I, I replant um, the vegetables. So I have in, um, in the main kitchen garden, outdoors, I have plenty, and I, I mean plenty really, of spinach. It looks like this. These are five plants. This is one of them. You see, there's one big root and some leaves. I harvested this plant uh, for lunch. And what I do now in uh, late fall is that I, I harvest as much as possible. I will try to show you. Right, so we have this plant. And when I prepare it to, for overwintering, I remove pretty much all the leaves. Look, I only want a tiny plant, not a big one. Um, like kale, I think is better uh, if it overwinters with a lot of leaves, but spinach and lettuce, I want to overwinter as small plants, right? So I then dig them up and I simply put them in the ground somewhere here in the polytunnel. Um, and they establish and they create like new roots and they will stand like this all through the winter, the dark period, um, darkest period of the year and the coldest of course. And they are quite hardy. The only thing I do is uh, I could cover it with like a cloth, um, a row cover or whatever. Here is a row cover uh, and it will stand through the winter and exactly the same as the, the, the new seedlings, um, they will start to grow in February, like beginning of March maybe, and then will produce a lot of leaves. And I mean really a lot of leaves uh, for a spring harvest. And this thing with overwintering, I think, is, is very important for, for people who want to create some sort of winter garden. Because most parts of the garden are empty now when it, uh, it, it's winter because you harvest everything and <laughs> there's not, I mean, you, you could not fill it with uh, plenty of beans, for example. So why not fill it with spinach? I mean, all people, I, I have seen numbers of how many uh, greenhouses there are in Sweden, for example. I have forgot the numbers, but I mean, plenty, 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 plenty of gardens have a greenhouse. But what do we do with it um, in wintertime? Well, we keep our, um, like the furniture or whatever, uh, pots and, uh, <laughs> well, rubbish uh, in, um, in it. And we should not. I think we should grow vegetables instead. And this is what I do in my, in my um, greenhouse. Right, so just to say something about this. Yes. You can grow, Cynthia, spinach and lettuce in the polytunnel. Give it a try. I don't know exactly where you are. I don't know uh, at all uh, where you are in the world. Um, 
but yes you can try doing that and I think also this trying is very important because I read books I read plenty of books and none of them did write anything about growing a kitchen garden the same way as I do um, so I have tried my way and trying to find a way to do things that suits me and this is what I've come up with and uh, probably it will suit <laughs> a whole lot of more gardeners um, I didn't catch your name really but you ask for mush uh, mush is the name of um, lamb's lettuce winter salad in Swedish when we buy uh, the lamb's lettuce in a store among the vegetables most often it says mash on um, the package but when we buy seeds for this vegetable it says lamb's lettuce winter salad in Swedish uh, it, it, in, in, many, in many languages this vegetable has different names uh, you know, it, it has in Sweden, we say wintersallat and fältsallat, for example, and there's even more names. It's the same with Finnish, in Norwegian, in French, and also in English. I just totally forgot the other name. And if you wonder how this vegetable, it is an amazing vegetable, how it looks, I will show you. Here are some lovely pak choy, by the way, and it's starting to bloom. And over here I have a green carpet of this lettuce, lamb's lettuce. This is what people buy in, in the store and I can grow it in my own garden. Look this. It's amazing. It's all fresh and it was not transported from one part of the world to another, <laughs> really. It's all grown in my own garden. The best thing with this little plant is that it can tolerate several uh, negative <laughs> temperatures or however you will put it. Um, in Celsius, you would say that it can stand um, uh, 30 degrees like negative. It's, it is very, very, very cold temperatures. And, and we have that um, part of the winter. Um, but this will stand perfectly well in a polytunnel, in a container or in a garden bed and even outdoor in the main kitchen garden uh, without any like shelter or protection. These plants were sown, I guess, in, in August. And I have several places, as I said yesterday as well, but I couldn't show you then, that I have the same type of vegetable in different places, um, both here in the polytunnel and also out in the main kitchen garden. So this is another sowing. And this is made by my two-year-old boy, Lua. And you couldn't tell really. The thing I do when I make this kind of sewing, you call it a broadcast sewing. You simply put all the, the seeds in your hand and spread over the surface, over the soil. And when harvesting then, I simply take the biggest plants and I leave the rest. <laughs> so we have two of them here. Here are some plants that I will have to do something about. I hate to keep things indoors winter time, but I will have to do with the citrus, citrus, more pak choy, and here, right, are more of this lamb's lettuce sown a couple of weeks ago and here are some more <laughs> of this amazing lamb's lettuce they were sown earlier than the other bed 
So I have, it's like a, I call it a garden larder where I grow plenty of vegetables to harvest when it's cold. Right, and in this mid section of the polytunnel, I have fava beans. I harvest the the sprouts, the, the, the leaves, the tops, and I fry it with garlic, for example, very tasty. Pak choy, mitsuna with a red stalk is very beautiful. Lettuce, miner's lettuce, some tiny pak choy that the slugs left for me. Lettuce, and this is little gem. And the uh, lamb's lettuce, and right, the sugar snap peas. And I think the children actually ate pretty much all of it yesterday. And when saying that uh, some plants are best to try to overwinter as small plants I can show you what I mean here very very small plants right this is also lettuce little gem ah, Benny you are watching today as well hi <laughs> actually my one of my cats made something here so this raw cover is not really for the cold it is to protect the planting from cats here are more lettuce I'm going to overwinter. It is a red salad bowl and this is a mini lettuce. I don't remember the name and little gem. It's a try because uh, these plants are really too big to overwinter in a good way, I believe. But at the same time, it depends on what type of winter we get and you don't know that. Um, when you start to prepare for your winter garden, you don't know how the winter will be. And I mean, you could, of course, end your summer season saying, oh, right, so this is it. And then don't do anything more. Or else you can think that, hmm, well, it might be a pretty nice October. I will give it a try. And as far as I uh, think of, of my garden and, and my own gardening project is that, I mean, a, a package of seed, I mean, it doesn't cost me anything really. <laughs> so I, I think I can afford to give it a try. And I know that if I do, let's say uh, half of uh, the seeds uh, will produce food in some way. I am so lucky. Most of all, because I can, uh, I can of course, harvest the food. But also because I am doing nice, nice things outdoor. And now finally, finally, look at this. Taking over 24 hours. Oh, my baby boy. is so tired, you know. He's been standing up for over 24 hours. It's a bit windy today as well. He actually got quite strong medicines and hopefully he will sleep for a few hours. It's actually quite nice. Oh, you see, it's so messy in our garden. This is how it looks when Four lovely children plays in the garden and now you don't want to watch me, you will watch the kitchen garden. And you are all with me. Still. So nice. I will sneak around here. Just to give you the full picture.
when people come to my my garden to have a look you know this garden is um well i don't know how to say it <laughs> it's quite famous in sweden even though it, people come here and they want to take pictures uh, selfies in the garden they say i want to have um, I want to do it here, the Skillnaden's picture, the Sarah's kitchen garden picture here, when you can see all the kitchen garden and the house. <laughs> and I think it's a really nice view. Uh, and so nice that I can actually show you today. So this is the um, brassicas that I was talking about yesterday. And look how many things still standing in the garden even though it's the end last days of october look at this beautiful all of it beautiful so much food right and how sad if people actually grow plenty of food in their own garden and then just stop gardening harvesting and preparing their kitchen garden for winter. I mean, this is plenty, plenty. Um, hmm. Oh, you are asking about the construction. Susan is asking about the construction um, for my trees and... Are you asking about this one, Susan? It's original, um, it's the type of, I don't even know the word for it. I, I, I will do a blog post about that. <laughs> it's it's uh, easier that way. Um, here, he, uh, it, it was, sorry, I go back to this. Um, this is uh, really um, uh, the type of rör som du har alltså vanliga plaströr liksom som används vid rörläggning. Well, you could you had a look. It's it's all I think it's ugly. It's really ugly, but I will remove them in a few years and it was I had them for free so um, I will just keep them. Just a short tour. Otherwise it will be too long for today I think. So this is uh, root vegetables, um, the salsify, I told you about yesterday, I think if I can harvest some. This is not the black one, oh no, it's too heavy. It's a white variety, water hose, yeah, no, not, wat no, not uh, water hose, not for watering Molly. It's like uh, the plumbing thing. Uh, and then um, these are the carrots I told about yesterday that my son removed. Uh, so I have two beds with carrots and it's winter carrots. They are tiny, tiny, tiny. Um, and I have already harvested the big ones and they are in, uh, in a big hole in in my polytunnel and I will keep them there uh, until until winter. So instead of harvesting here I go to the polytunnel and I dig them up uh, along with um, uh, root celeriac. So in the kitchen garden at the moment I think um, this mid section with the brassicas is like the most interesting part and uh, the carrots. We harvest them and uh, I also have, I showed you briefly, uh, the black salsify, um, but I will not harvest them until spring and that is basically because they can overwinter and keep in the ground and they keep so well. Uh, so I, I leave them and I harvest in springtime when we don't have like potatoes and other things left. And then we have this section. This is the best part of the garden, uh, basically because it's sheltered by this, a, a fence that I made and this wall behind me. So when it's blowing like very cold from the north, 
um, it will give shelter here. I don't know if you see it. In this part I have uh, deep uh, beds and they are dug in a technique that we call like in Swedish uh, deep digging and so they are very deep and I fill them with um, uh, organic material and uh, you can when you have this type of bed with a lot of nutrition um, you can actually grow things very very close to uh, each other so they, they get pretty much all the energy and the um, nutrition they, they, they need from the soil. And this I practice in this bed. It's also this deep dug bed. And here are leafy greens for a late harvest. I made a video about this. I'm sure we are going to translate it into English if it's not already been translated. Spinach, more of the fava beans. And you know, fava beans um, are not a bean, <laughs> it's, a, it's a pea. And therefore you can grow it late in the season without um, damages. We have had, we have had um, like negative temperatures um, below um, zero. Uh, for I don't know how many nights now. It's it's more it's more often than <laughs> than it's than not being freezing cold. Uh, so and this bed I don't cover it with a row cover or anything. It's just like it is, and I grow them the hardy vegetables. And these are very hardy varieties, radishes, more of the lamb's lettuce. <laughs> and rocket and the black kale and uh, lettuce, minus lettuce, you see they all come again in, in different places in the garden. Pak choy, some sort of tatsoi I think, a purple one and this is the, the tatsoi. This one is really 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 hardy. It can stand I don't know how much cold, but it will, it will last through the winter. It's so beautiful. And then the Kailan. Um, I actually had a question about Kailan. This is one of the Asian uh, leafy greens that you can grow late in the season. And someone asked me how to harvest it and how to eat it. And just simply, I will show you. You can eat the, the flowers as well, um, but the stems will get uh, like um, harder if, if you wait this long. I think this one is perfect. So you take it and you cut it, of course, in a nice and good way. <laughs> so here is the one. So you pick them and new parts will grow from here. And produce more and more. So, for a dinner or two, you can have a few of them. They are really tasty, and you can fry it with um, some garlic in a nice oil. Really tasty. Well, I want to show you plenty. <laughs> Uh, I don't know, uh, you used to say, I don't know where to start, but I don't know where to end, <laughs> right? <laughs> but my kids are waiting, so I am going to, to finish here and uh, then figure out what to show you yesterday, uh, tomorrow. Yesterday has already been, <laughs> right? So this made me actually a bit happier that everything worked out quite fine today. I don't know about the quality though, but uh, I can see that you have been with me this small tour. Um, maybe I will show you the north part of the garden tomorrow. I have some projects over there. <laughs> if you want to uh, give me a thumb up, I will be happy of course and make sure that you subscribe my channel to get a notification when I um, put up a new video or start a live stream or whatever. 
uh, it will make me happy and I'll see you tomorrow and of course don't forget to give me a comment and saying something that uh, about what you would like to see tomorrow um, thank you all for today bye bye